Welcome to this Itasca featured video. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to create a simple material using the linear parallel bond model. PFC can reproduce many behaviors observed in solid materials by using contact models. The contact models create bonds at the contacts between pieces, such as balls and facets, where the bonds conceptually represent material that can carry loads to a specified limit. If you introduce stresses below this limit, the material can behave similarly to a continuum solid. But if stresses exceed any local limit, the bonds will break and neighboring pieces can behave as if they were unbonded. This tutorial will guide you through the steps to create a simple parallel bonded material, which will have two contact models, a linear contact model for ball to facet contacts and a linear parallel bond model for ball to ball contacts. Remove the confinement by deleting the walls. And solve the system to a target equilibrium for different cases. For this tutorial, we will open a PFC example already available in the tutorial folder. To open the tutorial, go to help in the menu bar and select examples. Select PFC, tutorials, and bonded assembly. Select the project file and open it. To adjust the layout, go to Layout and choose Wide. To zoom in and out, hold the Control key and scroll, or hold the Control key and press the plus or minus key. We want to start with setting the general model controls, so mark the first three lines. The first line clears the model, which is useful if you will run the file multiple times. The second line sets the calculation mode to be large strain. The last line is not required, but sets a job title for this project. Right-click and choose Run Selection or use the shortcut, Control shift e For any PFC model, the first step is to create and define the extent of the domain. The domain extent is set to be a cube with side lengths of 20 units. By only specifying the location of the edges in the X direction, the Y and Z directions will use the same extent edges. The next step is an important and mandatory step for the PFC modeling procedure. To modify the default slots of the contact model assignment table. In the first line, we set the keyword proximity to a non-zero value in order to ensure that contacts are created if their surfaces are within the set distance. As mentioned, will this model have two types of contacts? In the second line, choose the linear contact model with a normal stiffness for all default entries. In the third line, we specify to use the linear parallel bond model for the ball-ball contacts to generate a bonded specimen. This leaves the linear contact model for the ball-facet contacts. Note that only the linear part of the linear parallel bond model is activated, so the model will behave as the linear model. Following this command, we will generate balls. To be able to bond them, they need to be confined. This is done by generating a closed box, a material vessel. By only specifying the extent in X direction, the box is a cube with equal sides. Create a collection of balls with overlaps and distribute them in the box. By adding the command, model random, with a fixed seed number, before we generate the balls, the same initial configuration will be produced each time the model is run. The balls created will have a radius within the range of 0.5 and 0.6. In the plot named the system, you can see the collection of balls within the closed material vessel. Note the large overlaps that exists. Save the current state as balls. Continue with setting the attributes of the balls, where the attributes are the characteristics such as density and local damping. The ball density is required to be a non-zero value in PFC, and the local damping coefficient is set to efficiently remove kinetic energy from the system. The model cycle command will execute 2000 time steps. The keyword com will reset the linear and angular velocities to zero every 10 cycles, which effectively will remove the kinetic energy from the system. 
This allows the balls to rearrange without significant overlapping and movement, which will result in dense packing relatively quickly. Solve the system to a target limit. Here the average force ratio. For further analysis, we install a measurement sphere to monitor and record the evolution of diagonal stresses within the assembly. In the plot named the system 2, you can see the system at this stage. Balls, walls, and the measurement sphere is plotted. Now that the dense assembly of balls has been equilibrated, the next step is to install parallel bonds in the system. This is done in two steps. The first step is to call a contact method. The method is issued to bond contacts with the contact model assignment table proximity distance. The second step is to set the bond elasticity and strength properties by assigning the properties, normal stiffness, shear stiffness, tensile strength, cohesion, and friction angle. Note that it is recommended to use a statistical distribution of these properties for real cases. The initial state is now complete. Reset the displacements and save the model state. To this point, we have created a parallel bonded material and will start to alter the model by removing the confinement. Start with deleting the walls and cycle the model once. Then the system is solved to the target equilibrium criterion and save the model state. Note that in this simulation, both linear and parallel bond stiffnesses coexist at the ball-to-ball -ball contacts. In the plot forces, you will see two final states. To the left are the forces in the linear spring, and to the right are the forces in the parallel bonds. In the plot stresses, you can see the history of the principal stresses within the assembly with the measurement sphere. In the plot force chains, you can see the final state after removing the confinement and solving with linear stiffness. Both ball displacement vectors and force chains in the system are shown. The previous simulation included both linear and parallel bond stiffness. We will now repeat the simulation, but setting the linear stiffness to zero. This should result in no forces present due to balls overlapping one another, and the model should be in equilibrium. Note that the contact forces calculated at the previous time step already are accumulated to the contacting balls, and it therefore will be a slight perturbation from equilibrium. Going back to the previous plots we can see the final state after removing the confinement and solving without linear stiffness. Repeat the simulation where the linear stiffness is set to zero, but remove the perturbation. To remove the perturbation, we must reset the linear contact forces that have been accumulated during the previous force displacement calculation cycle. By going back to the plot forces, we see the final state after removing the confinement, solving without linear stiffness, and resetting the accumulated contact forces. To the left are the forces in the linear spring, and to the right are the forces in the parallel bonds. We can now see that the forces in the linear spring and parallel bonds are zero. Thank you for watching this PFC tutorial. For more information about PFC and the linear parallel bond contact model, Outside of this tutorial, please see the description box for more information.